Hi YouTube, today we're going to look at a couple of guns that were submitted to the U.S. military around 2016-2017-ish to replace the long-running Beretta M9. Now, the Beretta M9 was at the end of its service run in the United States military. A lot of them were getting worn out and they were just not able to perform anymore. And there was a lot of complaints about the red of M9 towards the end because you couldn't really accessorize them. You couldn't put lights on them. They didn't really have reels on them or anything like that. So the military was looking to modernize their arsenal, their handgun arsenal. So they put a call out and they had a few requirements that they wanted for a replacement pistol. So a lot of people threw their hat in the rings, but... It really only came down to two companies, and that was Sig Sauer and Glock, two of the most popular um, handgun makers in the world. So, before we go any further, I'm going to show you there's nothing in these guns. They're both empty. All right, we got that out of the way. So... So the requirements that, they, that the military asked for was they wanted a gun that was not caliber specific. You could, they wanted it to be able to change calibers if necessary. They wanted it to be modular. They wanted it to fit a multitude of hand sizes and they wanted it to, you to be able to change sizes on the weapon basically. They wanted a thumb safety on it and it had to be a neutral color basically tan so sounds pretty simple huh so what six hour presented as their submission was the six hour p320 it had just came out they had just introduced it now this one's chambered in 45 acp i do not have one of these in nine millimeter to show you but it's the same platform you'll get the general idea everything works the same on it now, the, the submission was a full-size gun, and it came with a 17-round magazine, and it had the capability of putting an extended 20-round magazine in it, 20 rounds of 9mm. Now, some of the features of the 6-hour 320 was it has the front serration sears. You could press check, or you could use that to cock from the front in case you're in the stress you know you have wet hands bloody hands whatever have you they wanted night sights on it the um m17 has the cutout for the optic mount on top of it and this gun is truly a module gun and i'm going to show you i'm going to attempt to do this here on camera move this other way the what you do what's very unique about this pistol and to my knowledge this is the only company that does this is if you want to change this pistol out right now you just take it take the takedown lever down and remove the slide now you can put a different caliber slide and barrel on it put the magazines in it and there's your caliber change right there now if you remove this pin right here if I can do that this whole fire control group just lifts out of this gun. And this is what the firearm is. When you purchase one of these, this is the firearm. This is the serialized section that you have to do the background check and all that on. This is the firearm. This is a piece of plastic you can buy on Amazon for 40 or 50 bucks. And you can have any size, any color, whatever you want. It's got a little cut out here so you can see the serial number. There's no serial number. It's just literally a piece of plastic. And... You can buy different sizes so it will fit different hand sizes and all that. You can buy a full size frame and then you have to buy a full size slide. You can make this into a full size gun and you just use this serialized fire control group. It's very simple. I mean, I, I, it's actually kind of remarkable. It's a good innovative design. So in order to put this back in, I'm probably going to jumble around a little bit here on camera, but it literally just drops in snaps into place and this sometimes gets a little funky but you just take this pin wiggle it around a little bit it goes right in and slide the slide back on it lock it back 
put the takedown pin down and it's back together you can put any size grip module you want on it or frame whatever you choose to call it and that's what the military was looking for the glock this is what they submitted now this is the exactly the one they submitted except for this one doesn't have a thumb safety on it this is the exact gun they submitted and what glock did to break down a glock same as every other glock well Slide just slides off, and none of this comes out. None of it does. You can't change calibers or anything like that, to my knowledge. It's just, it is what it is. Now, what they considered a module was they come with interchangeable back straps that go on the back of it. So in the box, you get what looks like a bunch of 50 cent pieces of plastic. You knock these pins out and just add the back straps to it to make the grip you know, a little bit wider or a little bit more narrow or whatever. I don't have any on here now, but basically it's this size or bigger and that's what you get. And the magazine, they came with a flush mount 17 round magazine and this extended one that holds 19 rounds. So not only is it down one round, it's not a module gun and there's no um, cutout on top for optic mount. So in my opinion, Glock didn't seem to follow directions when they um, submitted their gun to the military. And it was a big contract. It was like $580 million for this contract. They were going to order like 200,000 guns right off the right out of the gate. And um, ultimately, Six Hour won the, won the um, competition because their gun was everything that they asked for. And... The price point is cheaper on this gun than it is this one. And a lot of people say it wasn't about the money, but whenever somebody says it's not about the money, it's about the money. And especially when you're dealing with the government, this gun was more expensive and it didn't do every, it, they didn't do everything that they asked them to do. So they elected to go with six hour and that's just the bottom line. I don't, I don't know why Glock and I like Glocks. I own several of them, but usually Glock is compared to like an Apple iPhone. Whenever Apple comes out with something, they have a big press conference and they show all this new innovative stuff. Well, the other companies have already done that. Like the Generation 5 Glock, now this isn't one, this is more like a hybrid thing, but the Generation 5 Glock, they made a big deal because they put these serrations on the front. Six hours been doing that for years. So is everybody else. It's just different things. Glock made a big deal that they had the ambidextrous things on it. Everybody else done has been doing that for years. I don't I don't know why Glocks always seems to be a little bit behind. And when they um when they do come out with something, they act like it's something like brand new, innovative designs. But I mean. As you can see, this thing has ambidextric stuff on it. You can switch this thing around, and they didn't have a press conference to tell us that they did it. But when Glock does something, everybody bows down and says, Oh my gosh, that's like the coolest thing ever. Well, everybody's been doing it already. Same goes with Apple iPhones. But basically, they're them being hardheads and not meeting the price point is what cost them a 580 million dollar contract and i understand they probably don't need it they they sell enough to the civilian market and other countries to they, they don't really need that but who doesn't need 580 million dollars i think i would have just followed directions a little bit better there was a little bit of controversy when it um when sig won the um contract some people said that they actually granted them the contract without them actually going through the 20,000 round um, durability test. I don't know all the facts on that. I really don't know all the facts on a lot of it. I just, I just know what I've read and what I've heard and all that. But basically, I don't, in my opinion, this isn't factual, so you can take it for what it's worth. 
I don't think the Glock followed directions properly. I don't think they did enough. I think they basically stuck the same design they've had for 40 years in front of them. It says, well, we're perfect. Choose us. We have a reputation and this is what it's going to cost. And that's the end of it. And the military went with this one cheaper and they met all the requirements. So let me know if I said anything wrong about this. Like I said, I'm not an expert on it. I'm sure I made a few errors in my information. And if I did, write them in the comments or let me know and correct me. I love to learn stuff. But that's why I feel that Glock did not win the military contract in 2017. Anyway, folks, I'm, you have a good day. And thank you very much for watching my video.